Hi there, Andy Malone, welcome back to the channel. This time, I'm gonna answer a question that a lot of people have been asking. How do administration roles work in Microsoft 365? Remember, if you like what you see, go ahead, click on that subscribe button down there and don't miss a thing. So, are you ready to learn? Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer. In this series of videos, I've tried to give you a good broad understanding of all of the features of Microsoft 365. One of the topics that we still have to cover is administration roles. They can be a little bit confusing, especially because they span all of the products. But how do they work and what do they do? Well, I thought in this week's episode, this is what we're going to focus on. So, are you ready? Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to start the demo in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And we're going to come into roles. So, just a, a quick word about what roles are. These are administration roles. So, if you need users to gain access to administration features, this is basically what you're going to use. Now, there is a god role, if you will, and this guy is called the global admin. So the global administrator is basically God within an organization. He can manage all aspects. He can manage absolutely every feature. Now, from a, a good security point, um, you want to kind of limit the number of people who have this role. So I, a, a good recommendation is uh, no less than two, but no more than five. That's the kind of the, the recommended uh, numbers. Now, if you do need users who need access to this role, you might want to give them global reader role instead. Um, so if they don't need the full functionality, but they need to be able to see everything, then the global reader role is quite useful. Um, some of the other roles that we have tend to be more... Um, specific so um, and, and the the idea of roles is that it matches a person's job role so for example if you are involved let's say in Microsoft Exchange or you work with Microsoft Dynamics or something like that then these are dedicated roles for these specific applications so each of the applications themselves such as Microsoft Exchange Online uh, Microsoft SharePoint all of these have their own sets of roles as well. And indeed, if I go into the Exchange Admin Center, and in fact, I'll just pop into the new Exchange Admin Center here. And if I just have a quick look, just over here, just wait for it to come in. Um, so you can see that we have got roles in uh, the Exchange Admin Center. So within Exchange, you can see that we also have a number of sub roles in here as well. Um, these might include, for example, Help Desk and so on. So there is a little bit of crossover um, with the various applications. So the key thing, the first thing you need to appreciate is that these are administration roles and you can have dedicated uh, roles for each of the applications as well. Now, just one little tip that I have for you. If I go into my active users, um, there's a couple of way of, well, there's two or three ways of assigning roles in 365. So if I go into Alan's account here, so within Alan's account, when you set up a new user, it basically says, hey, do you want to, do you want this user to be a role or do you want them to have a role so I can go in and I can manage roles here and this is again now you can see at the moment he doesn't have any uh, admin center access but I can go ahead and I can grant him these uh, different uh, roles uh, Andy can you have more than one role of course you can have um, so I can give him a help desk administrator and I can also make him a user admin as well so he gets multiple roles there so uh, again think about what uh, Alex's job is does he need access to those uh, particular roles now I got to be honest with you if you're a regular user 
or even if you're an administrator, you shouldn't be using admin roles for your day-to-day job. Uh, what you can do or what you might may, may consider doing is creating a separate user account and assigning it an admin role. The nice thing about user accounts uh, with roles is, sorry, I'll just go back, uh, is that they don't need uh, to, to have a license, all right? You've got your different licenses and apps here, uh, but from an admin perspective, you don't need to have a license, okay? And you, you'll be able to then manage all the features and functionality. Now, um, the other thing is that, uh, just a little top tip, I'm often asked, Andy, can I have um, external uh, users as administrators? Absolutely. And I've showed you this before. So if you go into the admin center in Azure, and if you go into group uh, users here, you can, of course, create guest users. And a guest user can also be an admin role, except the global admin. So they can, you can give them an admin role, but not the global admin. So a global admin must reside within your Azure Active Directory. Okay. Now, while we're in Azure AD here, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to have a look at these various roles and administrators. And as you can see, there's really quite a lot of roles um, within 365 and they all have their specific tasks. So um, obviously some are uh, user-based, some are also device-based. So if you're using tools like um, Endpoint Manager, for example, some devices may get specific roles as well. But you can see that you also have quite useful roles such as uh, password admins and so on and very useful by the way if you're let's say you've got a dedicated security person a dedicated co compliance person within your organization and you want to give them access to let's say the security center the compliance center but you don't want them to be a like say a global admin then assigning them to one of these roles can be very very useful um, so how do we do that then? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. In fact, that's probably quite a good uh, example. I'm going to come into the security um, operator. So uh, let's say at the moment, um, I don't have anyone in here at the moment, um, but I want to assign somebody uh, to this particular role. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add assignment and it will just come in in a second. I'm going to bring in a member. And what I want to do is I want to, let's say I'll bring in Alan. I'll bring in Alan here. And Alan is going to be my administrator. He's going to, he's going to deal with security within my organization, but I don't want him to have global admin roles. So I'm going to select him. And you can see I've now added in Alan DeYoung. So I'll click on next. Now at this point, it's now saying, okay, what type of assignment is um, Alan gonna have? Is he permanently, do, that means does he permanently need administration rights? So if he's a permanent member of staff, then fair enough. But let's say, for example, Alan's a contractor or Alan's a junior person within the organization and or even maybe you've gone on holiday, you're the security person, and you want Alan to take over your job. Well, rather than making Alan permanently uh, available, what you can do is you can make him eligible. So essentially here, you can say, hey, I'm going to give Alan access to um, this particular role for, let's say, a year. Okay. And that means he's eligible. Andy, does that mean that Alan gets access to that role right away? No. What happens is I can go ahead and you can see that he's eligible now. I'm going to assign him. Okay. So you can now see that Alan has been assigned. Why don't I see him here? So let me just refresh that. So why don't I see Alan? Okay. Well, the reason being is because he's not activated the role yet. So let's say you go on holiday and maybe he doesn't need to activate the role 
Um, now you can see um, it says here, yes, it's been directly assigned and you can see the date and the start time when it's going to finish. Uh, you can change any of the features if you want to. All right. Um, I can uh, go in, uh, I can go back into Alan's account and it will take me back into his assignment. At the moment, um, I'm not uh, assigning him. He's not um, being used at the moment. Um, so what are these other options? Well, first of all, the description will give me a full detailed rundown of exactly all the features um, and functionality of this particular role. I can also go into the role settings, and this is where it really gets interesting. I can control how uh, this role is used. Um, so if I click on to edit here, you can see activation. What's the maximum? So once Alan gets into this role, how long can he use it for? Can he use it for? So basically it's saying I can use it for eight hours or a maximum number of hours. Um, so up to, you know, 24 hours, let's say. So you can specify how long Alan is going to get access to the role for. Um, do you require uh, multi-factor authentication? Well, this is what we call a privileged role in 365 and in Azure. Absolutely, you definitely want to have this role um, switched on with multi-factor authentication. This will improve security. Require justification. So do you want, when Alan goes in, do you want him to put a note that says, I've had to activate this role because John's on holiday and I need access. Do you require a ticket uh, on activation? So an approval ticket. And on the subject of approvers, um, when Alan activates the role, do you want to um, do, does he need approved? So, for example, I've got a user called Megan and I'm going to say, hey, yes, I want Megan to approve Alan's access first of all. All right. So then I'll go next and it says, OK, uh, again, do you want to allow permanent eligible? So is he permanently eligible? Um, which means, you know, yes, he, he's always got access until 2022. Or do you want to say, yes, expire the elig eligibility, let's say after X number of months or days. OK, that can be useful because, you know, you might be back from holiday. So within that time, you might not he might not need it. OK. Um, allow permanent active assignment again. Um, expire the assignment after again. You can do three months. Whatever works for you guys. Again, you've also got required justification as well. So then you can also set notifications. So when the role is activated, who do you want to be told that the role? So it will send different types of notification. So it will send notifications to the users as well as the members who assigned the role, as well as to members to activate the role as well. All right. So again, I'm going to now update that and you can now see just in a second oops that uh, if I go back into my roles yeah and if I go into the security just scroll down da, 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 yeah here's the security operator one of the little issue thing one of the little thing here is that look at this the scope that means that Alan has got the rights to be a security operator for the entire Azure Active Directory. That means all users, all groups, and so on. Andy, is there any way to limit this? Absolutely. So one of the most um, innovative features, or one of the features I like, is something called admin units. So you can see here that I've, in fact, I'll create another one. I will create uh, an admin unit um, and I'll call it for 
the London office. Okay. So, oops. Sorry, just create it again. So, I'll call it my London HQ. Okay. And then I'm going to assign a role. And look at this. There you go. So, um, I could say, yeah, I want to have uh, a password administrator in the office and I would like Adele to be the password administrator so it, the the London office is only a small office um, so sometimes you know users forget their passwords it would be nice if Adele could do that so yeah okay that sounds good so again I'll just review that and I'll create so now what I've done is I've created the London HQ. So now I go into the London HQ and this is now where I add in my members. Okay, so I will now add in some users and I'm just going to bring these guys in. All right, so I'm going to add them in and I've now got these are the users that are in the London office. You can also bring in groups as well. So I can say, okay, I'll bring in, um, um, actually we don't have any groups. So let me just add one. So I will, let's say, I'll bring in the paralegals. Okay. So in the London office, I've got some users and I've also got the paralegals group. Just refresh this page because it just takes a minute to come through. Trust me, it will come through. It just takes a few minutes. Um, okay, and now if I go into roles and administrators, sure enough, if I go into password admin, look now, okay? So, um, oops, yes, there we go. So Adele is now the administrator. She's the password admin, but look at this time. Look at the scope. It's not the directory. It's only for the London HQ, all right? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call administrative units. And when you combine that with roles, very, very powerful feature, all right? So really nice feature. Just before I leave uh, roles, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that you can, um, you've got this new feature in um, groups. So groups are a way of organizing users together. So what you've now got, you've also got something privileged access groups in 365. And what this does, um, it basically just means that a group um, or a, a role can be a member of a group. So let's say, for example, in Microsoft 365, you had a template, a user template. And when you add that user, the user becomes a member of that group. The user then in turn also gets that admin role. Yes. So really powerful features in Microsoft 365. So there you have it. Admin roles in Microsoft 365 and also Microsoft Azure. I really hope you enjoyed that and you got something out of it. And remember, if you did, go ahead, as always, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell and don't miss future postings. Until next time, you stay safe. Thanks so much for dropping by. Remember, you can visit me at andymalone.org and go ahead and click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. I'll see you next time.